following podcast contains spoilers for the whole Star Wars saga. Yes! Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Ah. That's good stuff. Nothing like a good drink of yerba mate from our good friends at Guayaki. Yeah, well, tell me a little bit about, about Guayaki. An episode of Takis. Tell you about Guayaki. Yeah, who's Guayaki? Guayaki is our sponsor, makers and purveyors of fine organic yerba mate, the drink that will bring you to life. Like flavors mm. like classic gold? Blueforia. Mm. And Blueforia. Blue Blueforia. Blueforia. Yes. <laughs> uh, comes in bottles and cans and tea bags and whatever you'd hope to. Tea however bags. you like to. Oh, you can get it in loose leaf tea bags from Guayaki. Wait, I, is, I buy it. This is tea? Hey, this is it tea? This is a plant. It Look. Is I this soda? Get a can and read the back, and you can get all the <laughs> lore about what makes Guayaki Yerba Mate so fantastic. We love it because it gives us the energy to get through the week, to do all of our crazy late night podcasts, That's to it. edit hours of video oh. every day, and... We like it because they sponsor the Takis. Yeah. So thank you, Guayaki, once thank again, you. for your continued support. Thank you. Here's to you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, the reason we are here today. Oh, yeah. This has been a, a moment we've been looking forward to for some time. Now, I won't... Uh, just so you're not on pins and needles, I'll just let you know, we are going to talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi today. Yes, I have a uh, interruption. Wow. What's oh he doing? Oh my god. What's he... <laughs> no way. Oh That's man. That's a very busy shirt <laughs> for broadcast. <laughs> We're not broadcast safe, D. D. What are we going to do? Not broadcast safe, no. Vertical lines on TV? You're crazy. <laughs> Vertical lines. Wait, this is on TV now? <laughs> Sorry, my head wasn't on straight. <laughs> Horizontal lines and pineapples? Jeez. And pineapples. This is crazy. Okay. All right. okay. Anyway. Okay, sorry. Can I continue? Or will there be more undressing? <laughs> no, this is definitely more okay. undressing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, the Last Jedi, we will talk about. But we must preface this first. On a drive home from a shoot in Los Angeles, we were driving, making the six-hour drive back to... Um, Sacramento, late at night, a topic came up that <laughs> led us to find out that we are not united as we thought we were. No, we're not a team. It seemed we're for a long a time that we agreed on everything. And then somehow someone brought up Star Wars Episode Three: <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> Where to begin? And that that was the the ending of it all. It was because, yeah. as it turns out, Taylor, I like I like it. I think it's a good movie, Revenge of the Sith. I like it. Taylor likes the movie. Yeah. D hates the movie, absolutely to its core. <laughs> and I really sort of in the middle. I see its <laughs> merits and flaws, and boy, it got heated. And so ever since then, every time we've had a Star Wars conversation, we stuck a pin in it and said, no, 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 hold it in. <laughs> because in January, we're talking about The Last Jedi, and we can puke out all of our feelings <clears throat> about Star Wars. I'm getting really mad. <laughs> we, might, we might. So we'll, uh, friendships will end tonight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I already like rewrote the Carmen Line Studios bylaws. <laughs> oh, good. So I'm ready to so break up with you guys. Crap. I take the company. <laughs> At least it'll be recorded. You keep the debt. All right. <laughs> I'm glad to see that we could separate over a discre- disagreeing on a movie. Yeah. Well, I think we should start with The Last Jedi. Yes. So which one was The Last Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> Is that- e- this is episode eight. Was that the one with the... That's the one with the... Uh, Kylo Ren. <laughs> He's got like broad saber. Who's Kylo Ren? Let's uh, start. Okay, guys, come on. Let's not. <laughs> let's let's get let's get to the core of this right away, and then we can break off into all kinds of tangents. So first, your one minute or less takeaway from the movie, and then we'll start breaking this thing into pieces. Taylor, it. I like the Last Jedi. I like it. It's not like amazing. It's inconsistent. It might be the most inconsistent Star Wars movie in terms there are moments that 
I think are terrible. Push your mic back just a little bit. Yes. This way? No, away from you. There away. You there are a lot of moments that I think are terrible in The Last Jedi, but there's also a lot of moments that I really like a lot and enjoy a lot. Uh, so it's just like up and down, up and down, up and down. 90-degree <laughs> angle in terms of quality for me. Overall, I like it. All right. There you have it, folks. Who wants to fight? Uh, I, I really enjoyed this film uh, when I watched it. Um, and then later on I watched it again, and I didn't enjoy it so much. Uh, it's a fun movie to uh, eat popcorn and watch if you're not paying attention too much, if you're a filmmaker. Uh, otherwise, it's it's kind of a roller coaster that you can just sit down, turn off your brain, and kind of get into it. Kenny. Oh, I wish I could turn off my brain for movies, but <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> and uh, this movie really bothered me. It bothered me a lot. And uh, it's funny because coming away from it, I wasn't expecting to see so much of the Star Wars fandom get up in arms about it. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. That was unex- I did not expect that. Um, and so it's been interesting <clears throat> seeing that I'm not alone. There's a lot of people who dislike the movie, but most of them are disliking it for things very different from the reasons I disliked it. Yeah. Right? So, like, Star Wars fans are mostly ticked off because uh, Mr. Johnson decided to pull some fast ones. You know, his, his whole thing was like, I'm going to set you up. Like, this is going to be a very tropey, standard Star Wars movie. But then I'm going to I'm gonna head fake one way and then go another way. And I'm going to do it five times throughout the movie. Maybe too many times, Lots you know, of for times. some people. Yeah. Um, Brian Johnson, the writer and director of yes. yeah, Star Wars. And personally... I think if, if he wants to, to make a Star Wars movie that subverts all the Star Wars tropes, that's cool. That's cool. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me are big holes in storytelling and flat-out filmmaking mistakes <laughs> and, and sloppy storytelling, uh, which we'll dig into more. But, but I, I took exception to this movie as a movie. Right. Not as a Star Wars movie. That's good to know, because uh, Star Wars, I think, has kind of a different different judgment table, I think, that people use when they talk about Star Wars and when they start judging on Star Wars, because it's a franchise film, and it's it's, and it's a, a huge one at that, yeah. right? It's become a legend. It's like <laughs> the biggest franchise in cinema. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, there's not really anyone who doesn't know what Star Wars is. It's kind of like the Coke of the movie world. I yeah. know, and I kind of hate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I liked Star Wars better when the only way you could f- watch it was to find out which of your friends had a VHS <laughs> and, and, and try to dub it. Because you, you, last Christmas you got that really cool double VHS player. Or you had the cool dad who wired two v- VCRs together. Ooh. You know? So you can copy tapes. <laughs> anyway. That's some high-tech stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't we start on a positive note and each share what we think worked about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Let's do it. Before uh, we dump on this. <laughs> I want to go first. All okay. right, go. All right, so um, all of the visual stuff I loved in this movie. Um, and I don't mean cinematography. It actually didn't have great cinematography. But the... Uh, some of the stuff that was uh, really fun to look at was like the the Hoth like world mm. where it had all the the, the design. And all. Yeah, the design of it was really really just eye engaging. Mm. Uh, a lot of the visuals of um, the shots they had with the stormtroopers when they were when they were taken prisoner um, and they had the stormtroopers around them. The aesthetics of that scene was great. The aesthetics of the ships were awesome. The aesthetics of the ships that were uh, dropping bombs on the uh, on the bigger ship it was just it was crazy i i really liked the way everything looked mm-hmm. on on a on a surface level yeah yeah definitely it's really cool how the the salt is red underneath and you see like the explosions of red and stuff like that that, that was, was a lot of fun cool that was really cool um i loved the uh i love kylo ren i think he's the most interesting thing about the whole new saga so far um, and I love the conversations between Kylo Ren and Rey 
through different their, locations. Their, their psychic mm. Yeah, that was the really cool. Conversations. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the most interesting part of the movie for me. I like that that kind of how you, it kept teeter tottering. Like, oh, is Ray gonna turn to the dark side, or is Kylo gonna turn good one way or the other? They both think they're gonna kind of turn each other. And, and nothing and, happened. Yeah, unfortunately, kind of ends up <laughs> <laughs> kind of back to square one, <laughs> which is unfortunate. It's like it doesn't matter. Let's say, hey, we said we're staying on positive. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, uh, I like what they did with Luke. I think that was interesting, um, but I don't totally love it, I guess. All right. What do you think, Kenny? Uh, in, in terms of things that I liked. I liked the uh, entire <clears throat> Luke, Ray, Kylo, Snoke story angle. There, so there were mainly three uh, storylines sort of unfolding at the same time throughout yeah. the whole movie. At the end, they all kind of coalesce into one. Of the three, I think the one between Kylo, Luke, and Ray is by far the most interesting, and I wish was really the only one yeah yeah um, yeah I, I found myself wanting much more of that uh so i like that a lot including the you know the whole telepathy thing was really yeah. cool that was really neat and, i mean it was it wasn't just spe- they were there yeah right? they, the I way mean, they shot it made it, it seem like really they were interesting in the same place when like uh i guess ray was in the rain we just restart the camera the, oh yeah restart. Restart. Let's yeah just got restart it. them all so I got that one, that one. That one just yeah. stopped. Wow, look at that. Getting good Ray at this. was in the rain, and she does. Yeah. She reaches out to Kylo mentally, and, and then water ends up on his hands. On his hands. You know? so that was cool. It, it was opening up a yeah. whole world of possibility of things that the Force can do, mm-hmm. which maybe we never knew about. I think that's one of the things that's pissing people off, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that it, it took us this many movies to learn new Force tricks. <laughs> <laughs> That the Jedi Order didn't know about when they were in their heyday in the in the prequels. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine. Um, so, but I liked all that. I did, and um, uh, yeah, Adam Driver Great. brought it. And yeah. you know, every episode of the Talkies, I have to point out a really awesome shirtless man shot. <laughs> and in this dude Kylo, that good. man's been doing push-ups. Yeah, holy he's, cow, he's so broad. His you know he's like so six broad. six. Really? Is he really? Wow, yeah, he's ridiculous. super tall. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. And, yeah. and yeah. it makes up for those ears. <laughs> I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're that big and buff, it it takes those big ears and makes them normal. Yeah, it works. Uh, uh, he is fantastic. Uh, really loved his performance. Oh yeah. So uh, Mark Hamill brought it. Daisy Ridley's very talented. So I I enjoyed that immensely. Uh, the other thing that just super impressed me was Snoke. Snoke as a uh, as a performance, uh, a motion capture performance, again by Andy Serkis. And was it by Andy Serkis? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, of course. That's cool. Who else? Who else? <laughs> right. Who else? Andy Serkis as Snoke, fantastic mocap performance. Yeah. yeah. But a, the rendering of this guy, this was the most realistic lifelike digital creation of a humanoid creature that i've ever seen ever i would i would disagree but... i think so <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know bring it man i haven't seen anything that looked that textured another andy circus I mean, uh, felt like i could reach rendering. out and touch his skin <laughs> um what, what was the planet of the apes no uh, see but yeah. the problem is uh when you're able to put a layer of hair yeah, that's different. It makes it a lot easier no, to okay. look realistic. So the translucency of his skin was really cool. Like the, the how his pores and the scar yeah. on his face. It, like that looked. Really you looked cool. like you could reach out and touch him. <clears throat> to to me, it looked like when he Had was incredible walking. Incredible depth. When, when he was walking, it looked like almost. Did he ever walk? Yeah, the it felt walk. Like he the never one got walk, out of his chair. That's what I'm. Well, maybe because you <laughs> got that part out of your head because it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. I mean, sometimes people look at really, really interesting, really good CG and say, "Man, that sucked." So I don't know if I'm looking past that kind of stuff and I'm just like imagining it myself. But I saw it both times. Each time I watched it, and then every time he walks, there's there's this shift in gravity that doesn't happen in real life. Oh, they and so. Warp stabilizer problems. Yeah, it is warp stabilizer <laughs> yeah. problems. Yeah, that's basically. We all know about that. 
Uh, so I like I, those are my two highlights of the film. Uh, there's just some some creative artsy things they did, like uh, when Laura Dern's character, I forget her name, uh, blasts her spaceship oh, yeah. into light speed yeah, that was beautiful. to become a missile. And for the impact, they cut to silence. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Which but actually wasn't silent in my theater at all. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, everyone was... <gasps> oh, no, every time. Every time there's gasps, right? Yeah. It's so good. That was like, really it good. It had a great impact. Oh, yeah. But it was almost too artsy for Star Wars. Like, almost. It almost felt like this doesn't fit, but it was cool. Like It was almost more Stanley Kubrick kind of feel <laughs> to it. Uh, that was cool. That was really cool. But back to Snoke... This leads into the things I disliked about the movie. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> Jeez. I oh, think... wait, wait, wait. Sorry. The okay. score on this movie was amazing. I just wanted to bring up. Oh, yeah. I John thought the music was, it was just fantastic. I, you know, I don't even remember it. The, no? The thing is, I don't... like, I don't, I haven't really liked any of the new themes. Yeah. Except for Ray's theme is pretty good. Any other new piece of music I haven't really liked. So I like none the of them... Rogue One score. I don't even remember what it sounds like. Yeah, but you guys didn't like Rogue One. That's true. Yeah. So <laughs> you can all just go jump Episode off Episode 3. No, that had a good score. No. <laughs> yes, it did. It Act had an two. awesome Episode score. Episode 3 had an amazing score. Okay. Maybe the best. Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> the grossness of Episode 8. All right, the grossness. All right. Where to begin? Anywhere. Just pick so, a scene. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'll I'll start. Let's uh, okay. Let's start with the smaller qualms and build up. Okay. All right. I have a massive, massive, massive qualm. Does it hurt? <laughs> just huge. I think they have pills for that. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> this yeah, qualm. You can just check a doctor. Oh, you get that diagnosed. Qualm. Star Wars qualm. Star Wars qualm. Uh, uh, let's start with General Hux. Terrible. He he's a good character in the first movie. Yeah, he was good. An yeah. extremely competent actor. Yeah, he's become one of my favorite actors in in the Revenant. Yeah, in oh, Ex yeah. Machina. Yeah, he's great. He's really good. Um, and he was good in Force Awakens. Yep. But they pulled a fast one and changed his character. It to went into a, a Lord and Miller character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like a cartoon character. <laughs> oh man, you bringing those two up is very an interesting thing. Because this huge story during the Star Wars off season, right, in between <laughs> Star Wars movies, was talking about this fiasco of the Han Solo movie, right? Lord and Miller were fired. Why were they fired? Because they were doing things that were so not Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Meanwhile, Ryan, Ryan Johnson, Johnson makes the most not Star Wars Star Wars movie ever. I don't understand it. I don't understand what Disney is doing. I don't get no where, like where's their line? Like it always seemed like divi- de- uh, pretty defined that their line for um, auteurs versus studio executive meddling or whatever was pretty set where yeah. it's, it, it all felt studio driven well it's, it know? seemed like they had nailed down yeah. the algorithm yeah. for a fan pleasing Star Wars movie at least yeah from the and first Lord one and Miller JJ. weren't delivering that so they got canned yeah and yeah. so when I go to see Last Jedi I'm expecting yes this will be a very uh, predictable and um, you know cookie cutter Star Wars movie but everyone's gonna cheer and like it and it'll be fun and I was surprised. I'm like, whoa! They let Ryan Johnson go crazy with this. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And one instinct, like, I wonder that they did that because, uh, you know, everyone loved Force Awakens when it came out, and then after like a year, people kind of were like, oh, maybe it was too much like A New Hope. I hope something's different from the next Star Wars movie. I think they heard that and then did too much different or something. <laughs> so just but following the fans. Episode 8 was being written before Episode 7 was out. Was it really? Yeah, Ryan Johnson was writing the film before... Uh, right, so it's not in reaction so, to yeah, the fans. Yeah, it okay. isn't in reaction to the fans, but it is still crazy That's different. so funny, because it subverts almost everything that 7 sets up. Yeah, which is so well, bizarre. Well, I, and I, I I, think it's all a, it, it's all a symptom of not having three movies written at mm-hmm. once. Right. Ryan Johnson right. said when he took over from J.J. Abrams that he was given a clean slate. Yep. 
He was not told this is what happens next. He's not told this is where we're all taking this the end goal that right. we have to get to. He was just <clears throat> do whatever you want. Do yeah. what you think should happen which, next. Which, which sounds is, seems insane to me. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds fine from like an artistic perspective, but I mean, yeah, when you come into a story, a sequel no. or a part 2 of a three right, part, of a three part yeah. story, yeah, no, it needs to follow something. And it doesn't. <laughs> no, well, in yeah. many ways, this film doesn't feel like it's a sequel to the last movie. It, not at all. No. Because the feels last like a movie standalone. raised a bunch of questions, and then this movie said none of those questions mattered. Yeah. Which is sort of fun, because it's like, oh, it's not predictable. But at the same time, I'm like, well, so that first movie didn't matter. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's right. the problem. So, like, next time I watch The Force Awakens, and I hear Obi-Wan Kenobi calling Rey's name and sending Luke Skywalker's lightsaber to her, right. I'm, I'm like, yeah. oh... She must be spe- no. She's not special. She's so- right. So what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Right. So like, it's totally fine that what happened happened, but like, what does it mean? Right. And and I think though I don't think we're going to get good answers. Well, no. right. But they might not be good ones, and I'm sure they're going to answer like a bunch of stuff in episode three or nine. nine. But I really don't think like if that's why even have episode two or eight. Ugh. Why even have episode eight? If you're just going to go from 7, subvert, and then back to the storyline in 9, it doesn't make any sense to me. And why are these even 7, 8, 9 when they seem to have nothing to do with the first six movies? <laughs> it's just because it's just because uh, uh, Leia and Han was, was in it, and One then Luke B, was in B. it. And that's it. And they, <laughs> because they played minor characters. And, well, and it's obviously because episode 7 was a remake it wasn't a sequel, you know. It's a it, tribute it's a, movie. Yeah, tribute, it's like yeah. it's essentially it's a tribute to a new hope. Yeah, the idea was to. They've done Fan it all film. wrong. <laughs> they've done it all wrong, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, I don't mean to be negative about it because I do like. When it comes down to it, I do like both of these movies, but they're they're just handling the structure of this trilogy really poorly. Really poorly. Like they they could have really like they they needed to have Luke. Honestly, Han, Luke, and Leia should have all been in the episode seven and played major roles in episode seven, and then totally step away for the next two, like and have less than a line in the next two, to make the focus really on a new generation. Whereas Does it now, seem you like know, Finn has no purpose at all. None. He's none like at a all. non. Character, yeah, he's so thin, and yeah. it sucks because he started out really interesting. Started really cool yeah, and complex, yeah, yeah. like this. Uh, this uh, morally, uh, this, this moral crisis inside yeah. of a stormtrooper yeah. Yeah, it was, really was cool. a really cool idea. It was really interesting, yeah. yeah. And then he just gradually became so unimportant. <laughs> so boring. Yeah. And his storyline with the new character, Rose, yeah. was the most annoying part of this movie. Yeah, she yeah. cut it all it out. It should have been completely cut out. Mm-hmm. We have this whole sub-adventure where they go off to find this... Uh, uh, you master know, hacker this discount that they, Han hacker, Solo right? yeah, that they don't get <laughs> discount Han Solo so they get <laughs> so they they get Del what uh, they get Benicio, Sicario. Benicio, <laughs> Sicario Del Toro yes comes with comes with them and they go to do the big secret mission and fail so the whole th- th- it didn't matter it didn't change the plot at all even their failure didn't change the course of the movie right so right. it had no purpose should we get the other ones? Yeah, I'm going to. I got that one. Okay. And this one. Is that off? Nope. Oh, yeah, it's off. Now it's and on. Now it's on? Yes. Cool. So that entire storyline did nothing to move the story in any direction. In any direction. It just took cameras off of the stuff we wanted to be watching. Yep. yep. Um, another big waste of screen time is Captain Phasma. Yep. In the first... In the first movie, uh, they tease her in the trailer like she's this awesome new baddie. And then she has three lines and never takes off her helmet. So I'm like, and then they teased her in this trailer. So I'm like, oh, she's coming back. She's going to, she has this ongoing feud with Finn. It's probably going to culminate in like the third movie with some epic battle. No, they have a, a sword fight and she dies. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> this is like as tragic as Bubba Fett. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. I got that the impression that they were they were literally remaking Boba Fett exactly. It, it yeah. did seem that way now. <laughs> it yeah. does now, yeah. I mean, and it's funny because the number one thing people told me, because I have a lot of friends who hate the fact that I didn't like Force Awakens. Yeah. 
And my main thing was that, yeah, it was all well done, but it was just nothing new. It was, I mean, they even pointed it out in the movie that we've done this before. Right. Yeah, yeah that. there's even lines. <laughs> yeah, that nuts. Han Solo it. said it. He said, yeah, there's a way to blow it up. We've done it. Right. Oh, I, I can't handle that. I just cannot handle that. Uh, so I had like three or four friends tell me after seeing Last Jedi, they said, Kenny, you're going to love it because it's not a copy of other Star Wars movies. And my first reaction after finishing the movie was, this is such a copy of all the other Star Wars movies. They go out of their way to say that it's not also, but you know? While, while, while still proving being themselves it. wrong. I know. You know? It's like, we sure, it ended differently, but we still had a lightsaber fight between Luke and Darth Vader in front of the Emperor. <laughs> right? A few moments ago, D said, I really liked that scene on the Hoth-like planet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Captain Phasma is Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Yes. <laughs> it, it was full of this kind of stuff. And even, even for those fools who hate the fact that Luke Skywalker is a coward hiding away in exile because his trainee went to the dark side, that that's what... Yoda and Obi Wan Kenobi did both of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me though, th- I think there is definitely like people exaggerate how different uh, Last Jedi is. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think it is. It's far more different than uh, how Seven was to Four, because Seven like literally copied the exact same story storyline exactly. Right. Yeah. Whereas uh, Last Jedi <laughs> is taking with a Death Star. Yeah. It, but it was bigger. Yeah, it, Last Jedi <laughs> takes more from there's. I saw some episode six stuff. There's obviously five stuff in it, um, but then I think there is still some new stuff also going on with that kind of the plot of uh, the the main plot of the film is that it's a chase essentially, and that's unlike uh, yes, other Star Wars. Which films. is now brings me to another qualm. <laughs> qualm seventeen. <laughs> qualm seventeen a. <laughs> uh, so the First Order is chasing down the Rebel fleet. They're able to chase them through light speed. They can't get away. And now they're running out of fuel. Mm. And they've put, a, they've put a hard timer on the scene, which is always a dangerous thing to do when you're telling a story. Right. Because yeah. now you know set some going. rules. Right. You yeah. know where this is going. So they've set a timer. They said something like, we have six hours of fuel left. But that whole sequence is intercut with Ray training on the island with Luke. <laughs> now, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it felt like Ray was with Luke for days at least, yeah. if not longer. Yeah. Am I, ro- am I wrong? Absolutely. Yeah, it felt like days. Uh, absolutely not wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like days. Like, so she's like out here for days training with Luke while it's hours in outer space. Maybe it like... Proximity to a black hole is warping <laughs> time dilation. Gravity? No, you could, you no could it's, say it's that. like uh, you could say it, that. it's like Dunkirk. They take place. Hey, you know, I haven't in, seen Dunkirk. Sorry. Say Interstellar. No, no, no. Another it's Nolan. not like <laughs> Interstellar. It's like Dunkirk. <laughs> it's like Dunkirk, which is like a football game. Oh. <laughs> because in football, a play happens, and then they rewind and rewatch the play over and over for different angles. That's what Dunkirk. Oh, is so, this, like. so that's what this is like. Yeah. Yes. So you're saying that it, it, they're time jumping. They're time jumping, but they're supposed to be okay with it. <laughs> you're supposed to be one okay with it, and you're also supposed to be okay with them not telling you that they're time jumping. Uh huh. Battery. Battery. Woo. All right. And then I want to hear your major qualm. Yes, I have a major qualm. So I've been very curious, D. You've said you've had a major qualm, and yeah. you have not voiced it because you've been waiting for tonight. Yes. What what is this? Come on. Uh it's okay, so it's tough to explain because it's it's not a qualm about just story, this story. And it's not a qualm about Star Wars in general. It's a qualm about how stories are told in movies and how this one approaches stories told in movies. Star Wars in itself is is a it, what looks to be a giant giant story split up into 9 episodes. Um when it actually is just a single story, an episode four, that was then expanded upon for episode five and six, that were one storyline, then expanded backwards into one, two, and three, and then expanded forwards into the future of seven, eight, and nine. 
also which are not telling one story. Mm. <laughs> Episode 8 did not need to happen at all. The, the, the entire movie itself, we, we, we talk about how Ryan Johnson subverts expectations over and over and over every chance he gets. The entire movie would not make sense to anyone who's not familiar with Star Wars at all, right? If you had replaced the assets in this movie with that of like different of a different movie uh, where the characters were different names, you know, where the machines were different or something like that. And it wasn't in the star Wars universe, but everything happened the same way. It wouldn't make sense at all. And you shouldn't be able to do that with movies. <laughs> movies are stories first mm. lore, mm. lore second, you know, this was lore first completely. Mm-hmm. They, they said, Hey, remember this? Hey, remember this? Hey, remember this? How <laughs> this is going to happen. Nope. No, it's not. This is going to happen. No, it's not. Played with all expectations. And that's fine with something like an episodic nature. But again, we've established this, even though it's called an episode, is not an episode. These are not episodic movies. They're not following one after the other. If you look at Marvel films, um, uh, what, what is it? Like uh, Civil War, for instance, was is the third Captain uh, America movie. Yeah. Um, is a movie that is in itself, can, can stand by itself and can tell a story, even though people haven't watched the other ones, right? You, you don't really have to be familiar with everyone in order to get into the movie and be like, oh, this is what's happening, I can get on board, maybe I want to go back and check out the other ones. But it's not playing with your expectations because you're a fan, right? Star Wars has become such this huge franchise piece that they're able to make an entire movie based on fan expectations, And that really, really annoys me. (laughs) You can do that in Black Mirror, maybe. You know, like episode 16. You can do that on the finale of Breaking Bad. You can do that on the fourth season of The Walking Dead. You can't do it on, quote, episode 8, the eighth movie in a series of Star Wars. It doesn't make any sense to do it. Why? Because... In so, so let me tell you about Star Wars real quick. <laughs> so my so so Star Wars. I don't have. I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars, but I have, you know, I understand its history. Um, Star Wars Episode Four was made uh, as a like the reason why it's called Episode Four is because George Lucas really liked the idea of uh, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon back yeah. in the day. Serials. And yeah, yeah, so ex- exactly. Having having a, uh, a storyline that's been. Just keep going like comic books. It just keeps going, keeps going. It doesn't matter where you end up as long as you're somewhere in the middle and you see what's happening, you read about it, and then you continue. You know, they, he even copied the whole scroll mm-hmm. from Flash Gordon and Rick Rogers because um, he, he really liked this idea that someone's just thrown into the thing. So the, so he does that. He, he creates this quote, episode four, um, and then gets it published. Uh, people say... Uh, when it was in the theaters, because I wasn't alive then, but it was in theaters, and they took off the episode four thing because they thought it would confuse people. And George Lucas fought for it, but lost. Mm-hmm. Later on, when it got into the VHS series, it was put back in as episode four. So it was a standalone film. It was one storyline that happened. And, and and as you watch it, you get that form of completion. You know, mm-hmm. Even though it's supposed to be in the middle of a giant series, even though it's supposed to be, Everything that happens is perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. You understand everything that happens. You don't even care that you haven't seen Darth Vader, that you haven't seen the Clone Wars. It doesn't matter. That stuff just is in there. Um, it's just in the history. And then Episode 5 comes, which was actually Star Wars 2 back in the day, but changed it to Episode 5 because Episode 4 was so popular. Um, then, so after Episode 5 and 6, the, he's now created a storyline where it's 4, 5, and 6. He's created a, a, a bigger one that's expanding on 4. Mm-hmm. The, the reason why you can do that, a sequel like that, is because of people's expectations, because they've already absorbed everything in one movie. You can't do that in episode 8 because it's not the same thing. You don't have, we don't have a formal storyline in episode 7 like we did in 4. Mm-hmm. So episode seven is just a recapture of stuff we even talked about how it's exactly like episode four it's just it's just like a formality almost just a movie and episode eight wouldn't have happened if episode seven didn't if that makes any sense so you're saying that episode eight is a direct response to seven yeah but in a way that is not not in a way that episode five is a response to four. Exactly. Where it's or more, episode one, two, and three was a response to four, five, to and six. Four, five, and six. It was more of 
So yeah, that's weird. Um, and and it's the only franchise. It's the only film I believe that can do this. You know, even Justice League, you can go into Justice Justice League and understand what's happening without yeah, you know, yeah. Having that's a crazy thought. No, I do think I I think I think you're right with regards to <clears throat> making a movie that's based more on the audience than the story. Yeah, and that annoyed so, me yeah. so much. Uh, I get that, man. I do. I, don't, I, don't I do like get that, that very vibe. Much. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Another thought that came to me as you were pontificating, <laughs> yes, was that. Um, I'm never someone who would be caught in public saying that Marvel is better than Star Wars. But I will say that I think Disney is handling the Marvel Cinematic Universe far better yeah. than they are handling the Star Wars properties. Well, Star Wars is so broken by now, right? To, to, to start in 4, 5, and 6, and then well, go backwards and then forwards. Well, yeah. Sure, that's fine to say, but it still makes a billion dollars every time they put one yeah. out. Right. So broken? They're no, not going to take well, your word for that. The universe is broken. I mean, but, but, the, but the, the idea that it makes money... I mean, this is why... I mean, Avatar, right? Avatar is not, is not a great movie by any means. I mean, by some means. It, it's, it's, visually. It's yeah, great. visually, it's amazing. Um but it's it's set no you know it's all it's a tried and true method of storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Um, it does nothing risky except for some visuals, uh, and it's the top selling movie of all time. I mean, yeah, you don't you it's know, a spectacle. Yeah, movies for business are far different from movies that are good. Right. You know? Absolutely. Well, sure. Um, I think I think what you were kind of saying about Star Wars being like broken is true. Um, but in the sense that, like, I don't think there shouldn't – these movies should not be made at all. Seven – episode seven shouldn't have been made. Episode eight shouldn't have been made. And Rogue One shouldn't have been made, all from an artistic point of view. From a business point of view, it's obvious that they should be made. That they should be. And that they should be made every freaking year yeah. to the end of time. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen <laughs> Kennedy. Yeah. Well – But from an artistic point of view, uh, even the prequels – Debatably, shouldn't have been made, but I think I think the pre- I actually think the prequels are better than what we're getting now from Star Wars. I, I would ag- I would agree actually, I would agree. Wow, I was scared to say that. <laughs> oh man! Wow, some some listeners just crashed, just crashed their cars. Uh, well, I'll chime in on that because uh, I've been thinking a lot about the prequels because they did something really interesting with regards to audiences and expectations and um uh what do you call it when you're high on memories nostalgia nostalgia yeah. right um disney's the perfect company to own star wars now they were not the perfect company to own it when it was first coming out in the 70s but now it's perfect because disney's are the masters of Earning money off of nostalgia. Right. That's yeah. their thing. Yeah. Right. Right? That's what Disneyland is. Yep. Right. It's a nostalgia park. Right. <laughs> um, but when I went and saw episode one, The Phantom Menace, which is almost universally agreed to be a hard movie to watch, mm. um, it has one of the most annoying characters ever created. Right? <laughs> Anakin. <laughs> two of the most annoying characters ever created um uh and it even you know in, in hindsight upset lots of fans by introducing like metachlorians and, yeah. and stuff like that but i'm telling you on the day it came out in the movie theaters if you if you polled all the people walking out of the theater on the first time they saw it you would get close to a hundred percent thumbs oh, yeah. up. Definitely, yeah. people were so jazzed to hear that fanfare at the beginning of the movie, to see a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, to see a lightsaber. Yeah, I remember mean, the first time lightsabers were ignited. People like threw their like, popcorn right. in the air, <laughs> had movie <laughs> orgasm, and yeah. just you know blew their minds. Yeah, um, and then. And then it took some space. It took some time and some space for them to go. Oh, that that actually wasn't as good as as you know. Yeah, and I was one of those fans. I was I was one who was going. This is amazing when I watched it. Yeah, well, freaking Kevin Smith. 
right. said that he wept. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? But Kevin Smith actually wept during episode eight, too. Yeah. Right. Well, so. <laughs> maybe he's just a real weepy guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, those, those, those movies made tons of money because of nostalgia. Now, are they good or bad movies? They made lots of money. Lots of people saw them. Tons of people enjoyed them. Um, I don't think they're particularly made well. Uh, they're certainly not written well. Right. They were all written by a guy who admits he's a terrible writer. <laughs> right. Which, okay. <laughs> That's an interesting decision. <laughs> but after reading uh, a biography on George Lucas that I did earlier this year, camera... Reading that biography, hold that thought. I think we're going in. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor, you're rolling. And. Yeah. Kenny's rolling. Uh, I read a biography on George Lucas earlier this year that covered this whole period of his life. And um, it actually made me care about the prequels so much more because of the achievement that it was. Right. And what he did. Uh, what most people don't understand is that these are the largest independent movies ever made. Mm -hmm. These aren't studio films. Right. <laughs> he did this himself. Outside yeah. of Hollywood. With his own money, yeah. right? He, he had Hollywood distributed it for him, but these are independent movies, right? And he used them to push technology to the very brink. He wasn't saying... Let's find the latest and greatest technology to make this movie. He said, let's make new technology that goes far beyond anything that's ever been done. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, and completely changed Hollywood. Completely changed the way we make movies. Yep. Uh, Jar, Jar Jar Binks may be the single most important contribution that the prequels made <laughs> to all of our lives. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, th there wouldn't be a Gollum. Yeah, or the uh, the blue guys in Avatar, if it weren't for Jar Jar Binks, right, right, uh, and so I think that's all rather awesome. Episode two was also the first f big budget feature to be shot entirely on digital. That's right, cameras. Yeah, yeah, which is interesting. Uh, and um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, well, I was gonna say. The, the the prequel trilogy, one thing you can say about it over these new films is that they are very clearly three parts of one story. Yep. Right. Yeah. They tell one story. It's a first act, a second act, and a third act. And maybe flying contrary to what you said a minute ago, I think the original Star Wars trilogy is very much a first, second, and third act of a larger story. Yeah. Or at least you can make that more, argument. More or less, right. Um, and I also think the first trilogy in itself, card full. Woo! Uh, <laughs> the prequels trilogy was very deliberately made to be an act one of a much bigger three-part story. Yep. Maybe... I'll halfway disagree with it. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I could. You could definitely no, say definitely. that George Lucas. George Lucas um, probably was not assuming that a seven eight nine was going to be made. Right. But we could say this: the prequels definitely line up right to come before four five six. Right. It's funny right. how that is, considering their uh, pre prequels. Yes, <laughs> but there have been other prequels made that don't aren't really prequels. They right. just took place earlier. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they don't set up the next movie. Yeah. yeah. Where these were, I mean, they were very deliberately made to set up the original trilogy. Sometimes too much, right? It was like super over, you know, heavy-handed, you know, little boy Boba Fett picking up the head of his father and going, I will be a bounty hunter someday. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, <laughs> Just to be eaten later on. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, um, in that sense, if you look at that, that prequel trilogy as an act one and the second trilogy as an act two, these new movies don't fit. Not at all. Not whatsoever. At all. No. no. Yeah. And that's the problem. 
That's right. what I don't like about it. And also, um, the problem with new Star Wars is the every single year thing. Because a, a part of what made Star Wars so special was that it was special, and it wasn't every single year. And it was like, oh, like Episode Three happened, and that's the last Star Wars movie to ever be made. So everyone was thinking, but now we get these new Star Wars movies, which is exciting at first. When seven, I was like so excited for Episode Seven when it was coming out, I was like totally into the hype train. But now that there's going to be one every single year, like. It's like in episode one, you guys were saying, I didn't get to see that in the theaters. I was too young. But like everyone was like losing their minds when a lightsaber was ignited. People aren't going to be that way in five years when the episode 12 comes out. <laughs> they are devaluing and, yeah. the currency of Star Wars. Of Star Wars. <laughs> yes, it's inflated. It is. No, that's true. It, but that is true. Yeah. I mean, I feel that way. Um when I was in college, the four months I was in college, <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear a shirt, a Darth Vader shirt. And it's not like you could just find a Darth Vader shirt at Target. Like back then, getting a shirt with Darth Vader on it, you had to go to some strange fringe <laughs> shop that sold like movie posters and, and movie shirts and porn you know, <laughs> some weird place in Hollywood in Chinatown or something <laughs> little, little waving cats you know those that's all they have and and uh, and I would wear it and and it was a conversation starter they'd be like Darth Vader's on your shirt he's a bad guy and we'd have like philosophical talks about light and dark and and what makes a a, a, ba- a bad guy complex and interesting and and there's nothing noteworthy about wearing a Darth Vader shirt today. Yeah. Which, by the way, you could get at the 99 cent store. Yeah, it's just a casual I, uh, shirt you wear now. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's grown from something that was auteur driven to now yeah. a big, fat, huge, giant business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's actually, it'd be weird if you didn't have a Star Wars shirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have two. You know what's really hip is not having Star Wars stuff. Oh. That's like the end. It's like the now. whole not tattoo thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't even. I've never even touched a lightsaber. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I've touched lightsabers. Uh, I fought with lightsabers. Who hasn't fought with lightsabers? Yeah, everyone. You know what? I, as I was growing up with, uh, I mean, my laser friends, swords. Sorry. We would almost every day we would go into my backyard and we all had our plastic toy lightsabers and we would have giant lightsabers battles like every single day they, for like a year were they choreographed um <laughs> we get we got really good at it <laughs> did, so, you, did you reenact the duel of fakes <laughs> yeah, all the time. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 da. it was awesome see that's that's also the difference cuz i'm younger than you guys yeah so I the grew prequels up, were more magical to you. Yeah, right. I grew up watching the prequels and the original trilogy together simultaneously. You, you know what's interesting? What? My wife has never seen any Star Wars film prior to this, prior to 7. Um, well, That's okay. her first Star Wars film? She's seen episode 1, uh, but I don't think she was really into it. Like, she was a teenage girl at the time and wasn't into Star Wars. She didn't want to dress like Padme Amidala. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, she just knew that people had like crazy hair in there. Um, so episode seven and episode eight are kind of her own oh, really? introduction into the Star Wars universe. So I wonder if it's actually going to get better or worse as she goes backwards. Well, I, I don't know. That's well, I wonder she what, go back once there's 12 modern Star Wars movies, yeah. what like the kids growing up right now will think of the original trilogy. They won't right. like it. When it's like, yeah. It's I mean, already, like, I've already had um, Ryan, my nephew, who's 12 years old, says episode seven is just like episode four, but better. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> better. Is, yeah. Does, is he a fan of Transformers? <laughs> if you can't, if if you can't actually, hear it so through the cool. microphone or see it on the camera, <laughs> there is some vomit in my throat <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hold, and, it, and it's yerba mate flavored, hey, which hey, makes it much positive. more pleasant. Yeah, thank I you, wish I was vomiting. Come to life. On the subject of vomit, yes. episode three. <laughs> <laughs> episode three is not vomit. Now listen, <laughs> episode three had uh, what I what I would call the top and bottom. Star Wars moments in the same episode. What would you say was the top? 
Anakin and Obi-Wan's lightsaber fight on the lava planet <laughs> is probably the best choreographed sword fight in movies. I Maybe guess. only second to The Princess Bride when Indigo Montoya <laughs> duels. <laughs> These are like Wesley. grand, grand uh, <laughs> sayings here. Well, dude, I, I'm a big, by the way, same sword master choreographed both of those. Props to him. He also the, he also did the sword stuff in um, uh, all the sword stuff in uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh really? He worked with Earl Flynn. Like he's been around forever. Nice. Um, but anyway, I suppose there's probably not many sword masters <laughs> working in Hollywood. <laughs> sword masters. There's so many. Yeah, the sword master union. Uh, <laughs> local 363 sword master union. <laughs> um, uh, no, to me that. That is an awesome scene. That is so well done. Yeah. Um, uh, Nate. They, the, well, because it, they physically acted out that entire sword fight. I'm, it is cool. The, they the didn't only, speed them up. The yeah. only thing that I remember about episode... So I should have rewatched episode Oh, here you are crapping this. on a movie you don't even remember. I know, I know. No, <laughs> I, that's, I, can't, I can't go too much into it. Um, I didn't share the low part. No, no, no. Well, tell me the low part. Okay, so the, that was the highest. The yeah. lowest is when Darth Vader does his Frankenstein moment. <laughs> when, arise, Darth Vader. And, and he comes up. Wars pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> he breaks his bonds. He's in his costume for the first time. And by the way, Hayden Christensen requested to be in the costume. So it's actually him in there. Which is probably why his movements are so weird. Because <laughs> they had to, they built that thing around him so he'd still be six six. Yeah. Because Darth Vader is supposed to be six six. Hayden Christensen, not six. It's not six six. <laughs> so he's like really like like he's. It reminded me of the way Herman Munster moved, who walked on platform <laughs> shoes. Nice. Right. Nice. And then he goes. No. <laughs> that was the lowest moment. By the way, it, the French version. Of the Phantom Menace has a different no dubbed in. Uh, you mean in the Revenge yeah, of the Sith? Yeah, and it's better. <laughs> <laughs> it's different a better. Note. Yeah, it's like <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> comes out and goes no, <laughs> and, and then the Emperor's like we oui? <laughs> no, you killed her <laughs> no. <laughs> that scene Lord never. Vader? That scene didn't I'm bother. Him afraid me. you killed Padme. <laughs> <laughs> no. We. Oui. See French Star Wars now. <laughs> that didn't bother me too much. Actually, not at all. It doesn't bother me. All, all right, all right. Defend this. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Riddle me this, Taylor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about when really Anakin <laughs> Anakin Skywalker goes from devout Jedi to Sith Lord? In the blink of an eye. In no, two seconds. No, because it's it not... It was the fastest no, turn ever. No, no, Because Why? it's... Because he killed the sun. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's... Remember your mother? It's not like it was his first time being tempted by the dark side in that very moment. It, it has something that had been kind of growing on him throughout the whole trilogy they hint at it sure but like isn't that the point though like but it's not he like goes to murdering children in like a flash of an eye let, let me well no it's not though it's not though no wait it's let me, the let me most interject horribly let me interject. acted scene no but Bo- both of you guys so not bad. It's both really you guys not are right that bad. both of you guys are right and and i have to interject here because oh, yeah. because interpretation in movies is, is what makes them better than they are, right? Hmm. More open-ended movies, things that are directed to where they don't have so hard of a direction that you can interpret what's going on. And especially in Star Wars, you can create more depth. Hmm. So I think that's what you've done. And I think you're not reading into it. Well, no, dude. It was so on the nose. This is There is no room for interpretation. And that's what I think. And that's why I think <laughs> you're right. So, so here comes Mace Windu with his awesome purple lightsaber he just used it to get all the snakes off the plane (laughs) and now he's attacking palpatine palpatine microwaves his own face while trying to (laughs) electrocute his way out of it which by the way was like there could have been so many cooler ways to disfigure his face i hated that you continue your thought i have a thing on that uh oh 
Camera. And then camera. Sorry, Keegan. Hold that thought. Uh, hold uh, it. Rolling. That one froze. Uh. Can can you restart that one? There we go. Okay, this one's roll. Yep. Cool. Then Mace Windu decides he's too dangerous to be left alive, and he's about to s- slay him. <laughs> And I like and, your Samuel Jackson and, <laughs> impression. And then, and then Anakin cuts off Sammy Jackson's arm, and he gets force lightninged into oblivion. And then all of a sudden, he goes, "You are my master," and falls to his knees and worships him. The guy whose face just melted stands up and says, "You shall be Darth." Vader. <laughs> and there we have it. Darth Vader's born in the most rushed, unbelievable, <laughs> unemotional, total letdown of a scene. You forget that there's two movies before three. Did you watch those ones? Yes, I saw those. <laughs> and you know what? When the, the parts when Anakin was being pulled towards the dark side were some of the more interesting moments. Mm, yeah, When he I would slays agree. the village of sand people. Yeah. Uh, it was really cool. And in the beginning of episode three, when he cuts off Dooku's head, yeah. was a cool moment. Like, you saw that he's he has this bubbling under there. I'm just saying they didn't let it bubble enough. It came out way too fast, too fast. and out of nowhere. Yeah. It no, like it's not out joke. of nowhere, I would though. agree. It's definitely not out of nowhere. I think he came off fully cooked and from a parboil. You, you <laughs> also exaggerate the scene and delivery of that scene. Well, I call it for, creative For comedic license. purposes, <laughs> which is fun. But I'm just saying the scene isn't quite like that. You it's know? worse. <laughs> no, it's much better. Um, well, you also forget that... Um, how the Jedi, the Jedi in in the prequels and in this time of Star Wars, the whole thing is there's no emotion. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Right, they're Buddhists. You know? Yeah, so no emotion, no love interests, which is something that has constantly gone against Anakin since the very beginning. Since the very sure. beginning, episode yeah, one, sure. he shows his, he says, hey, mm. I miss my mom. And then Yoda goes, no, you cannot miss your mom. That's bad. <laughs> and then he falls in love with a, um, uh, with Padme. Yeah. And no, you cannot love Padme. So they get married in secret and it's just this, everything is going against him in the Jedi. They deny him. Being a master, they always are condescending to him, and he has these pulls to the dark side. Yeah, okay, so you're showing the amount of frustration you have right now (laughs) is the amount Anakin had in the movie. So what I'm saying is, to our listeners and and viewers, if they saw you stand up and cut off our heads, they would be like, that came out of nowhere. (laughs) Even though... They but no, <laughs> it's not like that because he goes and kills the sand people. He's killing people sand already. People he kills, are like ki- he kills it's... Dooku. <laughs> it's not like it's his first time killing. <laughs> okay, so I, I have to side with Kenny. I will fight you, T. I will fight you. <laughs> because picking the microphone. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so let me say, let me say why, and I, I want to keep my head on. If that's cool. um, uh, so so when you're talking about how he turns from like a blink of an eye, right? He he. There's a part in there. His eyes turn yellow. There, there's a part <laughs> in there where true. he where he talks about. Actually, let, let me talk about this real quick. Let's talk about this real quick. You were talking about the face melting thing, right? Yeah. Um, in episode four, when uh, Ben is talking about how the emperor had become the emperor i think i think it was this man i may not be remembering this right Mm. but i remember someone saying correct me if i'm wrong i will (laughs) (laughs) uh that his face had become monstrous because of the dark side because he fell to the dark side oh yes i think that's that's not said in episode it's not no what episode is that is it never said they never never talk about the emperor at all are you sure yeah yeah 
Okay, well then void point. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> but so, wait, can I just say something? Yeah, go ahead. That, that thought is in the prequels, but it's ditched. Um, in the prequels, they give uh, the guy who plays Palpatine this makeup that Ian gets... Ian Yes. Who, that gets more and more kind of sinister through episode... Like in episode two, he has like bags under his eyes. And oh, really? more yeah. sinister. The idea was that... It came... Yeah. The dark it was like side a late does choice. that. choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they they changed, and then it. they changed it to the yeah, lightning, to the thing, lightning, which thing, which, which then weird. doesn't make sense yeah. why what's his name Snoke is all warped because yeah. I thought oh he's so warped because he's so into the dark side but <laughs> maybe he just went <laughs> just, <laughs> for just being literally melted by force lightning he seems to walk it off pretty good <laughs> he does he yeah. just gets up and it's like ah <laughs> all right it's carbon all, fiber he, he actually it. come let's go kill <laughs> younglings okay so. Back to my point. Um, when he is, so by he, Aiden, Anakin. Hayden? Hayden. Is it Hayden? Hayden. Okay, so when Anakin is uh, witnessing this whole fight between the lightning and whatever, um, he realizes after he cuts off, uh, what's his name's arm, that he's not, pro- that he wasn't protecting anyone, right? He realizes that First Palpatine. First thing he says is, what have I done? Right, exactly. He says that. He says, what have I done? Understands that the Emperor is the emperor he's actually not you know this he he was from the dark side the whole time right mm. and he understands that shit i've messed up and then turns mm. that makes zero sense to me mm. like it, it it would make sense if he was like what have i done i shouldn't have done this this should have been now that should have been him going to the light side yeah <laughs> but instead he goes to the dark side what should have happened is maybe he says you know okay i'm i've messed up I'm not going to join you. And then the guy like forces him to join. Like that would make more sense to me. Hmm. Does that not? Um, no, I see what you're saying and I can give you that. But um, uh, how I would defend that would be, it could be a, a moment. You can't. Got him. <laughs> but You've see, the thing is, I, I can't, I will, yeah, I'll give Execute you that one. Execute order that is, 66. He probably shouldn't have said that line because it does imply it does. That he isn't. What have I done? Do yeah. Ah, screw it. Right. Yeah. And that's what I got from I'm that. with the bad yeah. side now. Um, <laughs> like, the, the way you're talking about where he builds up yeah. totally you're not is with right. me. <laughs> you're my enemy. <laughs> okay, so the another thing. From my real... point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> you're you're saying all the best lines. That line makes sense, too, actually. Uh, well, it, it does. Is it, it makes... foreshadowing? No, it's the opposite. It, it, if no, you. It's. Well, okay, that didn't make sense. It is. It's <laughs> foreshadowing when Obi Wan no. Kenobi later tells uh, Luke Skywalker that Darth Vader did kill your father from a certain point of view. <laughs> He's like, because no. cause, you know, Anakin pulled that crap on me. <laughs> yeah, remember? So I'm gonna pull it on you. So I'm gonna pull it on you. <laughs> <laughs> but from his, from Anakin's point of view, the Jedi are evil because of what I said earlier. If that from, doesn't make it a good line. While you're sword fighting. Yeah. From Why my not? point of view, the Jedi are yeah. evil. Okay, this isn't sword fighting, though. They're on lava machines that are flying around places. While and they're they like, sword fight? And they're on, like, towers that are falling. Yeah. This is this is the stupidest sword fight I've ever seen. Oh, now, no. now we will team Wrong. up on you. Yes. <laughs> Taylor, ignite lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> It's so Kill bad. Him. The, so the, Kill him now. You know what lightsaber <laughs> fight I really enjoyed was Duel of the Fates, right? Between Qui-Gon, Ben, yeah. and... Uh, that one's awesome. Oh, 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 yeah. And uh, that one. Darth Maul. Darth Maul. That was a cool That was fight. very cool. Yes. Um, no, 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 no. The prequels gave us dang good lightsaber yeah. action. Yeah. And there may be some purists out there that say, you know, that it's not about the sword fights and maybe yeah, it's, it's not. Who cares? But, it's, but it was really freaking cool to see. Yeah. Um, in that regard, episode three had terrible lightsaber fight at the end oh, between him and you suck. why? No, why? I, I liked I liked why? in the beginning where they were fighting just right there. What about when Palpatine using... fights with Yoda and they throw all the Senate donuts at each other? That was awesome. Also silly. It was kind of silly. I'll it give you silly. that. That was badass. Uh, when, I really like Yoda... Yoda versus Dooku. In episode two, I like Duke. I like him. I like Yoda versus Duke. Yoda, Yoda versus Emperor this with the lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> but also, what the hell? What the hell? Yeah, Yoda. Yoda is a very powerful Jedi, but he needs a walking stick. And he does like all. The... <laughs> it's his facade. And he has a mini lightsaber. 
It's very that small. is funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's Why funny. is his lightsaber? And really he small. F- and he like freaking f- flips everywhere and yells like he's a. Yeah. Like that he's... being said, that was the most amazing fangasm I'd ever been a part of. That yeah, that was pretty crazy. That, I mean, like the theater right, went erupted insane <laughs> yeah. because they very smartly. I don't even know if that's the right word. Smartly. Intelligently, <laughs> with great foresight, <laughs> kept that out of the marketing. Yeah. And I feel like if this were today, that would have been on the freaking billboard. <laughs> In the trailer. But Definitely. Back, but yeah. back then, they were smart enough to leave any trace of Yoda with a lightsaber out of the marketing. And so when he... It was a huge surprise. When Dooku says, we'll have to settle this with a lightsaber, you're like, well, well, what? And then he... He freaking force pulls his lightsaber out of his little yeah. vest and ignites it. And then people just, like, <laughs> I think there were tears. There was diarrhea. It was, <laughs> there was seizure. It, like, was, yeah, <laughs> it was not unexpected whatsoever. But, like, who who writes a character that, like that? Who who writes a simpleton? Uh, he's not a simpleton. But who writes a well, George old... George Lucas wrote it. <laughs> an old... Jedi, who is, yeah, very, very powerful with feeling the Force, but turned into, like, this kung fu master who but, just flips but, everywhere. And But why not, though? Why not? Because yeah. it doesn't match his character. But I think I think that's the, the idea. That's the, it's the subverting your tropes. And then, well, this is also very specifically my point of view. Mm-hmm. The Jedi are evil. Sorry. Specifically okay. from my no, point I of view. No, I agree with you. That the Jedi are evil because they are. <laughs> <laughs> From my point of view, um, I didn't like that f- fit my character because I watched the prequels and the original oh, trilogy. See, you are like Anakin. simultaneously. <laughs> I am Anakin. You are Anakin. <laughs> well, okay, back to Anakin. Here's the point I'd like to make. Uh, so <laughs> every time a point comes up, the camera stops. <laughs> now, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> We're rolling here. Okay, we are rolling on Taylor's, this one. That Yoda Not matched rolling. my, my yeah. idea of the character because that's what I knew of that the Yoda. The camera is rolling. <laughs> okay, you were saying? The camera is operational. <laughs> oh, I believe the <laughs> camera is quite operational. <laughs> <laughs> it will shoot you. I will drink this yerba mate. <laughs> Being sarcastic, Emperor. Uh, my... What were you saying about Anakin? Yes, Anakin. So I'm ready to fight. Going back to this whole idea of his arc happening too fast. Yeah. All right? I'm going to take a page out of your nephew's book okay. who says that episode seven is like episode four but better. Yeah. <laughs> Kylo Ren is Anakin but better. Ooh. They're actually doing the same thing with Kylo Ren, but Adam Driver and the writing behind his character is way better. The pacing's better. His inner conflict is more believable. It is tense. It is palpable. And and you're in love with him because of it. Because, like, my teenage angst uh, that I went through, like, resonates with what he's doing. Like, I see it. I feel it. It's real. Uh, not so with, with Anakin. prequel Anakin. Mm. I think if they had done the pacing the way they're doing it with him yeah he's revealed to us in two movies that he has this unhinged side that's scary yeah yeah. and i don't think that came through so well with anakin uh you know i agree with you um i definitely agree with you uh i think and i don't mean like the prequels do have terrible things in them that i won't defend um but i won't outright just say i hate them like a lot of people do but i don't either but I guess that what I'm saying is I really, really wish Kylo Ren was not a part of, like, surrounded by what he is surrounded by. You wish he was in the, the previous. Yeah, just straight out. Tra- give Kylo Ren give Hate Christensen to the new ones. <laughs> give Kylo Ren I'm down to with this. Anakin. <laughs> awesome. I want to do that. Well, that would be something. That'd be really yeah. cool. <laughs> Maybe we can edit a supercut. <laughs> See if we can edit him into the a trailer for the prequels. That'd be interesting. Yeah. That'd be very interesting. Yeah. I guess what it comes down with the prequels is, um, to me, the prequels are a, uh, the the whole is greater than the part of the sums. Did I say that right? Well, you're not you know, very The whole is math, greater than the sum of its but parts. I know, <laughs> I know what you're getting at. Yeah, that sentiment is how I feel about the prequels. Right. And I, I, I get that, too. 
Um, I could say the whole yes. But yeah. when looking at episode three, it sucks. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give this uh, defense. This is I always say this when the topic of the prequels come up. I also say it whenever people talk to me about M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I am a filmmaker who has struggled to make movies for over a decade. I have uh, managed to eke out a uh, humble living for my family, <laughs> but I have yet to make a movie that cost $100 million dollars I have never put a movie in a theater that has shown to hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of individuals. Uh, and I have yet to become a film director who everyone knows by name. So you know what? Hat freaking off <laughs> to you, George Lucas. And hat freaking off to you, M. Night Shyamalan, and every other filmmaker that everyone dumps on. Because you know what? You've done something really cool. I slow clap well, you. I mean, in that regard, the the room is amazing. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely, for different reasons. But but still, that's awesome. No, no, <laughs> that's super great. That's super great. Is it possible to make a million plus dollar movie that's bad? Then, in that regard. Well, no, not in that regard. I I'm. Uh... I guess what I'm applauding is like what you're, they were able to accomplish. Right, what they but did. can you shit on people yeah. that have made really, really multi, huge, multi million well, dollar movies? Well, I do. I make a living doing it now <laughs> because, because of the good people at Guayaki. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I think it's perfectly fine to criticize the movies, and, and we're all allowed to. Yeah. But I'm also not going to ignore the fact that. These guys have done something really awesome yeah. with their well, lives and yeah. are very yeah, just, inspiring. Just you just love movies. I, you know? I would say every comes down to it. I'd say every criticism is is bound behind that, right? You would yeah. say you would say, okay, first of all, hats off because holy crap, I could never do that. Now let's get on with it. What I think, yeah. <laughs> you know. First of all, I wouldn't state that limiting belief that you just stated, D. I I fully believe you can do that. Can do what? Whatever what you, you said, you can't do. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. Um, non-binary. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I had a thought real quick. What's up? <laughs> Episode eight, Kylo Ren. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really, really like Kylo's character. Kill the fast. Yes. Yeah. Uh, from from episode seven to episode eight, I think it's I think it's pretty cool what they've done. But uh, there was a kind of weird moment. Good abs. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Same. There was kind of a a weird moment where he, uh, his helmet, right in episode seven. Yeah, he smashes it because because Snoke made fun of him. Right. Okay. So so we we he get made fun this. Of my helmet. We, we get this idea that he that Snoke is like controlling him. Like right. He like he's really a little kid. cares about Snoke's uh, opinion. Opinion. Of him. Right. So so in episode seven, he's a. Uh, just lost my train of thought. Holy crap! Well, he's Can't like obsessed back. with Lu- with Darth Vader, right? Oh. So he's he's obsessed with Darth Vader. He wants to be this guy that he seems to never be, right? He's not the huge evil person that he thought he was. Um, he takes off his helmet when he talks to what's her name, Ray. Ray. To Ray, yeah. Uh, and the whole oh, man, I forgot where I was going with this. This may this may not work. Mm. <laughs> Note to editor. Is it because uh kind of goes back to Ryan Johnson not at all taking into account anything that happens in episode seven when he wrote episode eight, therefore disregarding Kylo's... Uh, Probably. Kylo's uh, infatuation with Darth Vader, which was completely dropped. I think you yeah, were tapping remember. into this idea that he revealed himself to Rey yeah. by taking off his helmet to show... His real self to her, right? Okay, so so taking off the helmet reveals depth of a character. Saying, "I don't need this to show you how evil I am." Right? Mm. This this is just a front, like whatever. Right? But then he goes on uh, through episode seven and into episode eight, still wearing the helmet, thinking that it, it makes him more evil or it makes him more Darth Vader esque, when he's already proved that he doesn't need it. And then he gets mad that Snoke makes fun of him and then smashes it. It's as if there's two different characters here. It's as if Kylo in the beginning was like, you know, um, he's more than him than he shows. Mm-hmm. It shows that he has depth in him, that he he doesn't really need this surface level, you know, 
Darth Vaderness. And then Episode Eight, he actually does need the surface level Darth Vaderness, and then destroys it because Snoke doesn't like it. And it's weird to see two different characteristics like that. Hmm. Yes, because he didn't grow at all. In fact, that's a de-escalation in a different way too. It's also weird that he um, cared so very much about Snoke's opinion of him and uh, killed him rather nonchalantly. Yeah, nonchalantly. Yeah, very little. Uh, by the way, my, one of my other, I, I missed this one. One of my other great highlights of that movie is the the lightsaber battle, where oh, yeah. Kylo Ren and Rey take on all those guards. That was a lot of fun. The red that guards, was... Snoke's guards. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I don't really like about how seven and eight handle lightsabers is that there's some weapons that block them very easily. Yeah. That's true. They keep it's... making up like they have the whip yeah. thing, and well, then which that, is like which is fine. Prong. Yeah. I mean, like, there's no, there's nothing really wrong with lightsabers being blocked sure but i mean but it makes it kind of it makes it like lightsabers aren't that powerful what, what do well, they it's it's kind of silly yeah. watching i guess finn wasn't a jedi but he had a lightsaber and it's weird watching a lightsaber battle between a jedi and right. a stormtrooper oh, right. and it like bounced off that thing yeah whatever yeah. it was and yet in uh, the phantom menace they s- stick a lightsaber through like a double right, through the door, door yeah. and start melting it. I yeah, love that. Cut That's a cool. hole in it. And they um, like go through the droids like they're absolutely nothing. Yeah. Can like, I get back to something I hated about yes. The Last Jedi? <laughs> Please. So I was really annoyed by uh, the departure of Snoke from this storyline. Yeah. was too. Cause, so he was just sort of hinted at in hologram form in the last movie. Yeah. This one we get to see him in all his glory and dude, he looks like a badass. I mean, he has this he has the coolest office I've ever seen <laughs> with the red decor and yeah, his beautiful. throne like it looks yeah. awesome. He even had the same magnifying glass that the emperor had. Yeah. And when he <laughs> yeah. and when he um is confronted with Rey, he demonstrates probably the most frightening power we've ever seen from a Star Wars bad guy. He makes Darth Vader's choke <laughs> right. thing look like a preschool trick. Yeah. <laughs> he makes the Emperor's Force Lightning look tame. I mean, he looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we have a thousand stories about this guy. Where did he come from? How powerful is he? What is he? How did the First Order form? Right. And what's his why goal? is he in charge of it? Yeah. Right. What's his goal? Right? Uh... And I'm in love. I'm like, this is this is great. And supposedly he can read everyone's mind and see things before they happen. And Kylo Ren kills him with a little trick, with trickery. <laughs> Fooled ya. And yeah. then there's you no... thought I was pointing the lightsaber at her, but I was actually pointing it at you. And cuts him in half, and he's gone. And it's not so... really even part of of uh, Adam Driver's character. Ugh. Right to to kill with trickery. Yeah, well, to, well, to 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 yeah, to kill with trickery. <laughs> well, and he'd also he, he'd been more of a whipped hound before, yeah. right? You know? Not not someone who just kills his boss. Yeah, I mean, I I, what, I expected him to somehow block the lightsaber when it came out. You know, me, I I thought his his body was gonna like magically sew or, back together, right? Go back together or something. Like, yeah, I really did. I that would've been kind of cool. Yeah. That would have been interesting. So I was really disappointed to see yeah. him die. I didn't like that at all either. And then that was immediately followed up with a very interesting moment, a standoff between Kylo Ren and Rey. Love that. When it looks like, are they going to join each other? Should have. That would have been really cool. Yeah. Camera stop. Camera stop. We're going over there. Uh, can you roll rolling? Yeah. And Taylor is rolling. Okay, so... It looked like they might join each other. They don't. They have this cool standoff where they explode a lightsaber, which means bye-bye to the special lightsaber. So, yeah. again, another episode seven thing thrown out the window. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but for that brief moment, I went, oh, my gosh. That's why this is the last Jedi. They are going to f- join each other. He's going to leave the First Order. She's going to leave the Jedi training they're going to become a new thing that's not Jedi, that's not super dogmatic on the, on the light side or super dogmatic on the dark side. 
but something in between and new, and therefore the Jedi has ended. How cool would that have been? How cool would it have been so, indeed? See, and that would have cool. been an actual subversion of expectations. Right. That makes Thank sense. You. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it also would have been... <laughs> it also would have been a... Uh, it would have made the title make sense instead of the title of the movie itself being Being a subversion. subversion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was was like, okay, when I got to the end, I'm like, so wait, why was it the last... Oh, just to trick us. That's the only reason it was called The Last Jedi. There was no Last Jedi. (laughs) Ah. Subversion for subversion's sake. I mean, instead of, like, actual depth in a story. Yeah. That was... Yeah, had that happened, it would have subverted expectations in the right way. Because it would have actually delivered something that we care about and not just, heh, gotcha. Yeah. Heh, gotcha. How about um, when Luke shows up as like a, I guess, an astral projection of himself? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he, you know, he walks into the rebel base um, and <clears throat> later we find out he was never really there. But he hands Leia <laughs> these golden <laughs> dice that hung in the cockpit of Han Solo's, uh, you know, they belong to Han Solo. Which she holds. She holds them in her hand. <laughs> right. And then he goes out, they blast him to bits, uh, but he's not hurt because we find out later he's not really there. He has his fake lightsaber fight with uh, Kylo Ren. Which was pretty dope. That was a good moment. I, I agree. Moment, yeah. I agree. I like that a lot too. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I like the fact that he was project, uh, projecting himself. And right. He's floating on the island somewhere. Right. That was all pretty cool, I thought. Um, but but he disappears. The dice remain. <laughs> Kylo Ren physically picks them up. <coughs> and then they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just making stuff up as we go along? Oh. Yoda appears to oh, Luke. Right. I forgot. And... <clears throat> He's controls trolling. the weather. <laughs> what a badass. He can make lightning strike. He also physically touches Luke Skywalker. He hits him with his stick. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is he a force ghost? Is he there? Have we thrown out the rules? O- yeah. Obi-Wan said when Darth Vader was gonna when he's fighting Darth Vader, he tells him, If you if you strike me down, I'll be more powerful than you could ever imagine. And I remember thinking, not really. You just become a ghost who can like whisper things into Luke's ear. But maybe, maybe, maybe this, maybe, maybe, this maybe is he it. is more powerful than ever. Right. But if he is, why don't they intervene more often? Because <laughs> they're the Jedi. Because it takes a lot of energy. Like maybe. if they're greater than that. If Yoda can physically touch, can he handle a lightsaber still? Can he strike Snoke with lightning? Oh, that's a weird thought. <laughs> right. Uh, you, you know that when, was another pointless scene, by the way. When Yoda's Yoda, appearance was totally pointless. As a, as a the but, sacred Jedi text. <laughs> so okay, so when he strikes the 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 tree yeah. and it catches on fire, and, and he says, laughing. "What are you doing?" Right. Um, I was thinking that is so great. That's hilarious to think that Luke would go over there and try to destroy the books, but then he stops himself. He's like, "I don't know if I should," and then Yoda does it. I'm like, oh, he's proven to Luke that he actually cares about the text. So I'm thinking Luke's going to run in there, grab the books, and come back out. What are you doing? But instead, it just burns. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, what I saw is Yoda's telling us that Luke is right, that the yeah. Jedi have to end. Which, but, which led but to nothing. Doesn't. Which led to nothing. It doesn't end. And not only that, but like the, the freaking books survive after that because, because of their little Easter egg. Yeah, oh, right. Pool. Yeah. Oh, gosh, oh, yeah, I, I did see that. that. Where did those come from? Another subversion. <laughs> oh. No, they're going to disappear in episode nine. There was a force, force that'll projection. Be, that'll be, oh. <laughs> force projection. Because, see, that's what I was going to say. Because I think with the dice, Luke uh, spent the last bit of his energy to keep the force projection of the dice Long enough, there. Long enough yeah, to where he pick for him, him up. For he can pick it up and look at it and have that moment where he's like, Jackson I killed my dad. dad. I, I like how Leia... Left the dice there too. Yeah. How, how yeah. about the absence of mourning the passing of important characters? I hate. I hate it. So it's so terrible. First, we had the major gaff. Yeah. In episode seven, where <coughs> fresh after the killing of Han Solo, they return back to the base. 
the, the, the door opens and out comes Chewbacca and Rey. And Leia runs to Rey and hugs her. <laughs> and Chewbacca's just kind of standing to there. Come, to comfort her for losing the man she met two days ago. And Chewbacca's just standing there going, <laughs> you know. It's like, what? Second of all, Admiral Akbar got blasted into space. And they give him, like, a sentence. <laughs> Admiral Akbar, you know, he's gone. You know, nothing. <laughs> Admiral Akbar's dead, and they're just like, everyone's dead. Admiral Akbar, everyone. <laughs> like, wait, that guy that was in the other That's ones? all we get? And then when they tell, they show up on the island, and Luke goes, wait a minute. Where's Han? And right. then they cut to the next scene, and it's like, whatever. Luke doesn't care at all about Han. <laughs> He doesn't. He just says, "Yeah, they did do the Where's Han?" <laughs> As if it's gonna lead to like him, like on the Millennium like breaking Falcon, down like or something, crying yeah. or something. But it just cuts it away. Just, yeah, it just skips. Um, it just goes to the RTD two moment. It has Last Jedi has some of my least favorite Star Wars moments in all of Star Wars. Sad. Uh, what about the milking of the giant creature? I like that. Yeah. I think that was good because it's just weird. You want some of that milk, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. Really badly. <laughs> want some of that sweet, sweet oh monster God. milk. That was one of the funniest, it was I think, weird. subversion things. Yeah. That was really weird. Like, and I you're was not, done with that. You're not expecting something like that to happen, and that was funny. That was I, like – I mean – That was like Thor Ragnarok funny. Yeah. Weird. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did have a Thor Ragnarok feeling – it felt like an interesting way to spend eighty thousand dollars, <laughs> whatever that one shot would have cost. Right. Uh, <laughs> my probably least favorite thing, two least favorite things to ever happen in Star Wars. One was Leia flying through space. How did we get this far and not bring up Mary Poppins? Yeah, I could not believe. That. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I loved it when it happened. The I first audibly time. laughed. Yeah. And <laughs> the moment she started flying. After that, when what she started the hell? when she started uh, telepathically communicating with Luke, who's like galaxies away. Yeah. In a coma. In a coma. That's when I was just like, okay, wait, her her pow- she's like been training or something. Yeah. What <laughs> is she oh, super it's sensitive? So dumb. I so, hate it so much. I went into this movie assuming we're going to see Leia die. This is the movie Leia Die. Right. I was sure of Which it. Which would be a good send-off, too, in their whole space battle. So they blast her into space, and it was an interesting way for her to go because Kylo Ren is he conflicted. doesn't do it. Yeah. He doesn't pull the trigger, and then someone else does it. Yeah. The thing that should have been his right as the new Dark Lord. Yeah. Right. right. He should have been the one, but right. he didn't, which means his scrap of humanity is still in there somewhere. That's yeah. cool, right? Yeah. That's cool, yeah. Um, and she's blown into space. Car and, full. Oh, car full. Oh, Man, it's not a roll. I know, I know. She's blasted in space. We'll get back to it. What? It's because we're an hour and a half in. Let's keep going. Yeah, well, Star Wars. <laughs> so, so Kyle, so uh, the bridge is just blown to bits. Admiral Akbar is blown to uh, is it's red gone. mist now. <laughs> right. But Leia's just blown into outer space, and I thought this is going to be a good send off. And then they cut back to her floating body, and you see her start to move a little. Like, she's slightly frosted over, mm. right? Would you expect her to be frozen, maybe cracking into little pieces right. by now? You're thinking, oh, no, this is the scene. <laughs> like, this is the scene she, she's going to send off. That's right. I was <laughs> ready. I'm like, this is going to be good. And she starts to move a little bit. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be where they reveal that she has some force sensitivity. Yeah. And she's going to do, like, <clears throat> one last gesture to help the rebellion. She's going to, like, save some lives, you know? Push something, you know. <laughs> right, right. Force choke them. I don't know. Something. <laughs> just, force choke them. That'd be hilarious. Just, yeah. <laughs> force force choke General Hux. <laughs> <laughs> just Hux. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but then she puts her arm forward and just starts gliding through space, and it looks so much like Mary Poppins. <laughs> like <laughs> it's so unfortunate. That they could not have made that look less like Mary Poppins. Because it, it looked like Mary Poppins. Mm. And she made it all the way back to the ship and got on board. And then they and they opened the door for her without, you know, getting sucked out. Yeah, that should have happened to <laughs> the airlock. The airlock they was broken. The airlock and let her in and she just kinda like goes in and they close it. Oh they man. All, they should have all have been sucked out. Remember and when like the hardest thing about defending Star Wars was like light speed? 
Right. <laughs> you can't really go light speed. In, because, uh, in parsecs. Oh, or... parsecs. That's not actually a measurement of time. Uh, or, uh, Just... or, you know, if it was an actual laser sword, it would go on and on forever. It yeah. could not be contained to just a... You know, those were the good old days, right? <laughs> and you would just say, guys, it's in a galaxy far, far away, okay? They're not governed by the same rules of time and space. But you know what? But Leia flies through space! <laughs> <laughs> she can't do that! I almost, I was ready for, like, Star-Lord to fly in <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and grab her. Just grab her and pull her aboard his ship See, with Rocket, the raccoon. Now, that's an interesting point, because when, when it happened to Star-Lord in, in that movie, it was fine. It, it didn't bother anyone in that movie. Right, yeah. Because they've set so many rules up in that movie that that was acceptable. Yeah. And in the Star Wars universe, there's so many rules that have been set up. And because Ryan is Ryan, he goes, ha! <laughs> <laughs> I make my own rules. Right. And then breaks all I of them. just in. smile all the time. Just, really, this movie did not need to be made. <laughs> and, and with the, the Marvel kind of thing, the other thing that I just hate about The Last Jedi, and, and it makes it one of my least favorite things about Star Wars or to happen in Star Wars is pretty much all of the humor. All of it. Because it's just, it's just Marvel humor yeah. forced right into Star Wars. Yeah, some of it was a little... Awful. He dusted his shoulder. It's terrible. I Dude, hate it. That was really out of place. That and was like, okay, so you are making references to current Earth <laughs> pop culture in Star Wars. Now. Yeah. And Luke, like, when he's talking to... Like, you should make to... a Lady Gaga joke. Why not? <laughs> Luke's talking to Ray, and Ray's like, I'm from nowhere. And then she's like, oh, nobody's from nowhere. And then she's like, I'm from Jakku. And then he's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty much nowhere. He completely interrupts the drama for one second for no reason other than humor and then jumps right back into, like, it's like he breaks character. You feel the force? Feel the force? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Grass. Oh, and the opening with uh, Poe and General Hux, their banter about like, oh, I'll, I'll hold for Hux. Can you General Hugs. <laughs> the, 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 your mom called. <laughs> 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 oh, gosh, no. Why can't you just make a serious movie? Why does everything have to have so much ridiculous humor? It does, yeah. Even oh. the original Star Wars didn't have... That much humor. No, in it. Well, no. the humor came from no, the characters, it. not right. like uh, and it, the writing. And it would only come or... from Dialogue. like one character. Right. Like yeah. It, Han Solo Han was Solo. the source of humor. Right. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. yeah. You get jokes from freaking Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. That well, doesn't me. Did, he did in Rogue One. I was gonna say that. Really yeah. <laughs> and that's I hate don't that. Choke <laughs> on your aspirations. Yeah. No, Try don't. not to choke on your aspirations. I hate that. Uh, uh, I can't. Uh, did, did you like that? Uh, that's a good one. Did you like that? <laughs> that was a good one, Dark Lord. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> I very, just, very funny, sir. I very just good. watched The Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also didn't like... I like what they were trying to do, but I hate the way it was pulled off. And they used Poe's character, who in the first movie was a courageous sort of secondary hero. In this movie, he was purpose. his purpose was to be the annoying know-it-all man... So you could set up Laura Dern's character and um, Princess Leia yeah. as the women who know better and whose judgment should just be trusted. That's really f- funny that you connected with that because I didn't, I didn't see that at well, all. Everyone talked about it after, that this was like a big smackdown on mansplaining, <laughs> which was cool. Yeah. I mean, I, liked, I do like that, but it felt so intentional. Yeah. And it was at the expense of an otherwise interesting character. Yeah. After this movie, I thought Poe was just a dick. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm like, I don't like you at all anymore. Yeah. I think you're an idiot. I almost felt like cheering when Leia shoots him. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, thank you. That so, guy was horrible. Yeah. I, I liked I liked how they approached... really on the nose. I liked how they made Poe a, a dick in this only... Oh, shoot. You're not rolling. Why are you not rolling? Roll camera. Can you, can you start that? Oh, good. Boop. Oh, no. Sorry, editor. He's talking to himself. Because <laughs> he'll edit it. Oh. We've been rolling for one hour and 37 <laughs> minutes. Wow. 
Maybe we can move to a wrap up. No. Uh, you have lost. <laughs> you have lost. Okay, so I liked Poe being a dick in this. Um, and the reason why is because I liked... Uh, I I didn't like how they changed his personality from episode 7 to episode 8. I thought that was really inconsistent, really weird. But I liked how he had characterization as opposed to Finn, who had zero. Yeah. Or Rose, who had Less. writing. Or Ray, who had history. <laughs> <laughs> there was no there was no thing to drive these other characters but Poe was driven by I guess machismo bloodlust or yeah or machismo <laughs> but it was Testosterone. weird it was really weird but but I did like it until they subverted it and I I mean to be fair to Poe uh they could have avoided his mutiny if they just told him their plan yeah, that's like, like the, the, it was. Such they a never petty revealed thing. a reason why they wouldn't tell him. <laughs> she was just being like super petty. Yeah, yeah, like petty about it, right? So yeah, he was mansplaining, and yeah, <laughs> she did know better, but she, she was kind of a dick. She about was kind it. of a dick also, about it. Was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, why you gotta be a dick? Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, I don't like. I don't really like any of the new characters except Kylo. Kylo's the only new character that oh, I Snoke like. Oh, Snoke was good. Oh, yeah, Snoke for a <laughs> second, I guess. The idea of Snoke the is good. The idea of Snoke The good. concept of Snoke <laughs> yeah. would be great, but we never, really, we never got it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Snoke's In memoriam. not really In memoriam. does anything. For dead Snokes. <laughs> <laughs> Ray is, is just super good at everything, just for no reason, just because. Ray has no motivation, either. Yeah, and she's just kind of doing whatever Ugh. it is. She, She's, she's just because Jedi are good. So it was she's so right. Good. It was so frustrating that she stayed with with the rebellion. Yeah, at that moment it was because because she needed to. It go. It actually made sense for her to go with Kylo Ren. Right. Yes, it like, did. She should have. Yeah. Right. And she yeah. should have come back later. You yeah. know, in another movie or something. Yeah. Realizing yeah. like that would be the last straw thing that happened in Episode Three. And yeah. wouldn't it We're be great about, if the two you know? of them would have to team up to overthrow Snoke, who was still alive, but he's dead. Whoa. Hey Ryan, that's compelling. <laughs> Wow. JJ, bring back hey, Snoke, which keep, I'm sure he Keep won't. these notes for the reboot in 20 years when you run out of ideas. <laughs> 20 years, that's pretty generous. Meanwhile, guys, we are... I know this has been an hour and 40-something, but we will be revisiting Star Wars in just a few months. Oh, gosh. Oh, so Han, Han Solo Han Solo's coming out. out in May. Oh, and that, that Japanese product. And it may be... <laughs> It may be a unbelievable train wreck. I'm scared. I really hope. Wouldn't it be awesome if it's just fantastic? That'd be that great. That'd be great. It just shocks yeah. us and it's just fantastic. That's like the most I could hope for. Yeah. 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 Well, it won't. Be. I don't expect. Um, it. I don't either. I <laughs> whenever I see so bad. Whenever I see Rogue One on my Netflix queue, I'm like, oh, that's a oh, that's not a good movie. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. I want no. We're not going there. Solo. I want Solo to be awesome. Of all the Star Wars movies to be made in the current era, I think Rogue One's the best. And it's because it came without the expectations and baggage. Right. Uh, it, it even though a, it is episode three and a half. It, it, sort of. <laughs> sort of. Um, I, I think that uh, the property of Star Wars would be better served if Disney primarily focused on... Anthology. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. Anthology films, films that take place in the universe, but don't mess with stuff that's already been done. And yeah. that's what Ryan Johnson sort of done was his his idea for making a trilogy of his own should have been just he shouldn't have he done shouldn't have episode done eight. Yeah, he should no have just episode. went and did his own thing. Maybe yeah. they shouldn't make a nine. Just leave it. <laughs> just leave it the way it is. Almost, just leave it ambiguous. It should. The next movie should just be called Ren, a Star Wars movie. <laughs> a Star Wars story. <laughs> and just be a Kylo Ren thing. That would be cool. And I like Kylo. Yeah. All the things that were teased in the first movie that don't pay off at all in the second just piss me off. Well, I feel like they're going to come back in nine, which makes eight null. Pur- purposeless? Right. The first two, ep- seven and eight are just pointless films, and nine is the only one. Well, seven up sets up all the questions. Well, and in, yeah. and nine eight, would answer them. <laughs> in, eight, in eight, they show the whole they show the whole betrayal of Luke Skywalker, or the... Luke's betrayal of Kylo, however you want to <laughs> view that thing. It's and a misunderstanding. It, and it doesn't match up at all with what they show in the first movie. When you see oh, yeah, the Luke Skywalker is kneeling with 
with R2D2 R2. yeah. in yeah. the rain, and there's Kylo Ren with all his cronies. I want to see those guys. Oh, was They're, that Armies of Ren? The Knights, Knights of Ren. Knights of Ren. Knights of Ren. They were not in this movie. Yeah. They're not a part of this movie. And you know what's funny is <laughs> that specifically, the Knights of Ren was the one thing I was most looking forward to seeing more of. You will not. And I don't think I ever will see you any will more not. of them. It might be a spinoff in the, you know, the, the 12th Star Wars movie. Star Wars, the, the Knights, Knights of Ren, of Star Ren Wars a Star Wars story? <laughs> I'd Star see Wars it. Story. That'd be awesome. Great oh, Jedi. Let's not, let's not be silly here. We're going to see every Star Wars movie. Star Killer. I That's the that. problem. We need to oh. stop watching Star Wars movies. No, I Boycott? refuse. I love yeah. the Star Wars universe. I do. I hate most of the movies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but, this, <laughs> but the Star Wars universe is so cool. <laughs> well, you know, the universe is 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 deep. You know, George Lucas did the thing right in rooting rooting the whole universe in mythology and history. Right. Yeah. That, yeah building that a world first. Yeah. Yeah. Deeply ties into the human psyche. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's relatable and feel feels real because right. it's tied into the same stories we've been telling for thousands of years. Yeah. That's really cool. That is really cool. Maybe people like Kathleen Kennedy and, uh, oh, shoot, the police are here. Uh, yeah, go. Should we go? Uh, episode 8 was good, you guys. Come with us. <laughs> yeah. Kathleen Dead Kennedy Wars found police. us. <laughs> I was going to say Kathleen Kennedy and her cronies <laughs> should go and read some uh, some uh, hero with a thousand faces. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, get, get some mythology on and, and take take – Tell some meaningful stories. You know what's oh, cool about man. Star Wars is it, it it's nothing. Na- <laughs> <laughs> Lightsabers, the force. Well, Those. It's, it's, it gets to be this sci-fi thing without being sci-fi. Well, like to me, it's it's more fantasy than sci-fi. Yeah, it, yeah. it is it's fantasy. A, it's its own yeah. Star Wars yeah. genre. Yeah, it's, which is cool. Uh, I like that. It's more sort of the stone, sort in the stone. Yeah. Than it is, you know, it, Star it's, Trek. It's, you know, yeah, Arthur and his knights. Than it is Star Trek. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, which is good because you don't have to explain how lightsabers or light speed works. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like it. I like that. I lo- and I love Star Wars when it comes down to it. I love Star Wars. I like that it exists. Yeah. I don't like what they've done with it. Most I love George I like Lucas. Most of the movies, and uh, I might be crucified for this, but I wish he was in charge of these movies. Absolutely. I, I wish George agree. Lucas was in charge of these movies. I yep. have no. I have zero opinion. I would that. prefer <laughs> that he go make other movies because I think <laughs> that's the. I think he has some truth. cool stories to tell. Yeah. I think I feel like he's just too lazy to, to make a movie now. Maybe yeah. I think he's just tired. Man, not lazy. Just tired. 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 I would yeah. say tired. I mean, yeah. he kept telling people, "I'm gonna walk away so I can go make my art art house movies." Yeah. Which I would love to see because THX is freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but he's uh, if he's doing that, he's keeping it to himself. Well, he did say that's what he was gonna do. He said he was gonna make his experimental films and only show them to his friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. All right. What a weirdo. (laughs) Here we are broadcasting to, what, 10 people? (laughs) (laughs) Only our friends listen to our show, so I guess we we can relate. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I love George Lucas. Me too. Uh, He is awesome, and his story is awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, That being said, I I think for now we've said all we can say about Star Wars. We've... We've, we'll be back. We've defended. We've pooped upon. Yep. <laughs> and now I think it's time to say adieu. To tell May. Uh, yeah, that's right. In May, we're <laughs> going to come back and discuss... The, Not until May. First, the, we're still going to have episodes between. The, yeah, yeah <laughs> we have other movies to talk in the meantime. But in May, we'll be back to discuss Solo. Yes. Yeah. The the fascinating hybrid Lord Miller, Ron Howard movie. <laughs> what? Lord Miller <laughs> Howard. <laughs> Imagine if 21 Jump Street was interrupted mid-production and they brought Ron Howard on <laughs> to finish it. That would be ridiculous. That would be so crazy. Of course, he did direct The Grinch. I suppose. But, I, I mean, just saw even The Grinch for the first like time. Ron I'm Howard. sorry. Two days ago. Has good it. art direction. I love yeah. The Grinch. The art direction yeah. is, is... You really did? Well, I mean... It's a terrible movie. No, no, I like, I like Jim Carrey in it. I don't. Speaking of which, Jim and Andy, have you seen them? That's an awesome movie. That's a great movie. I've seen Man on the Moon. Let the audience know, know. We do like some movies here. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till we talk about Shape of Water. 
Oh, Coming up, man. that's our next our next episode. And, oh, and yes, disaster artist. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do like some <laughs> movies. Shape of Water. Oof. Um, Oof. I like that. Yeah, so I guess I guess we should do a quick wrap up. Let's do a wrap brief up. Brief final thoughts on yeah. The Last Jedi. D. Final thoughts. This was uh, I would quote my Facebook post. Um, Star Wars Episode Eight. The it doesn't matter what happens in this episode because we know we're gonna we know you're gonna watch Episode Nine Jedi. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my thoughts. Um, I'd say uh, it's not amazing. It's not that good, but I do like it. I think it's my favorite of all the new Star Wars movies still. Um, and that's actually just because I I prefer subversion for the sake of subversion over remake for the sake of remake. So that's my thoughts. I still like Rogue One as the uh, of the three because it relied on neither yeah. remake or subversion yeah. and was its own movie. Yeah. So I don't for like what that's I don't worth. Like Rogue but One. my final thought on. Uh, the Last Jedi. Uh, if I had to sum it up into a um, an audible sound, it would be <laughs> meh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Sounds good. That's fair enough. You've been listening to another long, lengthy discussion about a movie we disliked. Epic. We will be back very soon. <laughs> Episodes every week, all year long, Woo. where we will be talking about movies we love and movies we hate and just making movies. Talkies every single week. Yeah. Talkies every single week. We will be doing this weekly from now on. I don't know what day yeah, it'll what day? be up. Should we decide this right now? While that camera the has camera turned just turned off. off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one. Yeah, just leave them We're on. going. Uh, what day of the week should it be on? Monday. We'll come back to you. <laughs> we'll get back. We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Until next time, you've been listening to the Takis, sponsored by Guayaki, Yerba Mate, Come to Life. Come should to we start my camera, please? <laughs> yeah, we should have. Um, D. D. D, is your can not open? <laughs> Why isn't your can open, D? We have a contractual obligation. What is that? Oh, oh, oh. Hmm? Is that? That is not a. That is not a. You, we have to blur out that logo now. Thanks a lot, D. Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Say something nice about Guayaki, please. <laughs> Make up for your foolishness. It's it's a pretty can. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Guayaki, come to life. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Kenny. I'm D. <laughs> I forget. I did. I am a. Uh, Taylor? 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 And may the force be with you. All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> you are to be in pictures. You're wonderful to see. You are to be in pictures. Oh, what a hit you would be. Your voice would thrill a nation. <laughs>